Craig is definitely one of the toughest competitors out there. He comes across as a very smiley, happy guy out of the car and he's very consistent with that, but in the car, you know, you can't let that smile um, confuse you. He's very aggressive on the track, he knows how to drive and he'll put the car wherever there's space. He's very, very competitive. I mean, under, under the big smile is a very, very fierce competitor and, and based on that, um, I think he uses it to, to remove himself from the rigours, you know, of motorsport. Basically, as Peter said, just enjoy it for what it is. Enjoy the moment, enjoy it. Now he'd go and stand in the pit lane and go, wow, oh, look at the crowd. Isn't it magical? You know, look at the skies, blue skies. I mean, what better place? Where would you else? Where would you open? Like, you wouldn't be on to be anywhere else. Right well, in the middle of the back. Well, 72, there was only a small group of us. We were permanent employees. And that was just a year that everything went right for Peter. Craig was born in 74, so that was, uh, he was born two years after. Uh, Peter had won his first race at Bathurst. Craig was a little tacker. It becomes like a big family. And so, you know, you watch the kids grow up. I come along and I, I immediately had an attraction to cars and tinkering and mechanical stuff and pulling things apart and not, not, not sure exactly how to go back together. And you'd always have that one nut left. You can think, where did that go? 21-year-old Craig Lowndes is a young man in a hurry. Peter and Craig drove together. Peter was very, very supportive of Craig, especially the things away from the actual competition. Peter went through a stage where a bit of the green-eyed monster came in because he was nearing the end of his career and he could see this young guy coming through and, and Peter wasn't one to think about retirement very easy. You get this monster which kind of brings out sometimes the best in people but also sometimes the worst in people. Craig got the good go fast bits and so there was a while there where Peter wasn't allowed in the workshop and wasn't allowed to look under the bonnet of the car and wasn't allowed to hop in Craig's car and, and that was very hurtful for Peter at that time. Driving identical cars, why is one guy performing and one guy not? But very often there's more to the story in this business. The real story, okay. <laughs> the real story. The truth is she thought I was uh, a bit of a, um, an, a typical driver, arrogant. I did. <laughs> I did. My friend Mike's boyfriend at the time said to me, for God's sake, Nat, can you just get his phone number, you know, just get his, I want HRT tickets. And I thought, oh, okay, yep, yeah, the last thing you'll ever do for me. Oh, rightio. So we exchanged phone numbers and then uh, three days later, yeah, he came up to Queensland and he's been up here ever since. Now that is the real story. <laughs> You know, Nat, as I said, Nat knows when I'm, uh, you know, my good days and bad days, and, and uh, we try and make it I as good. I am so good. cooking you dinner tonight. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Craig Lowndes wins history in the making. Bathurst's youngest winners. So we won the trifecta, which Peter Brock's the only other person who's ever done it. If you'd like me really frank, we made it into a big thing. We made it into this thing that was called the Triple Crown, right? Yeah, or something he hasn't done, I'm sure he would have liked to have done. <laughs> Tom Walsh will come along and say, well, look, you know, we'd love to help and, uh, you know, sign this contract. So, of course, I signed the contract. If you've ever seen competitive motor racing, you better go and stand on the side and watch this, because this is young blokes who would sell their mother to win a race. And uh, the car went up onto its roof. Once it hit the roof, the front windscreen shattered. Um, at that point, I put my hands on my, on, off the steering wheel onto my, onto my helmet. But the, the most memorable part of it was having the drivers stop and get out and come to my assistance. It came a time when Craig sort of grew bigger than what was able to be controlled by the people who felt they needed to control every little thing. So we just made a decision that's right for us. They decided that it's time to put the reins on Craig a little and uh, and suddenly he found that he was being put in the same position as Peter had early, earlier. With Craig, what you see at a racetrack, the way he smiles, the way he is, his persona, is pretty much exactly what he's like at home. Now I've had to, as I said, grow up and, and uh, you know, not, it's not all about me and that's Nat's favourite saying, it's not all about you. The property here in Kilcoy is about 420 acres. It allows us to have our eight horses that we've got here now and probably roughly 150 head of cattle. I knew by a tone of a voice and her and body language that something was seriously wrong and I didn't know at that point whether it was you know, her family, my family, my brother, like, you know, what was going on. And then she said that Peter had passed away. And um... I can honestly tell you I've never, ever seen him so upset. Yeah, ever. He was an emotional wreck, to be honest. You just want to reach out and hug him because I know uh, the impact that it had on him. Uh, 
it, it's like it was no different to being one of my own kids. And today, for the last time, the front row of the grid was his alone. What I saw at Mount Panorama blew me away. The, the tributes and the, just the emotional outpouring. The parade lap uh, with Craig driving that car. Uh, I'm not an emotional person, but that um, was very tough. As we get down to 29 minutes, folks, to the start of the 2006 Super G Autos Bathurst 1000. That race um, meant more than any other race you'll ever do. Certain events like you know, Target Tassie and other, other events like that, which I've probably been wanting to do. Uh, which you can't do. Which now. I can't do. Now. Like before the incident with Federbrock, probably had ambitions to, to get Ford involved and, and do it. But now, I'm just not interested. I'd just rather be at home with Nat and the kids in here and, and be in one piece and, and enjoy life for what it is, not, not necessarily going out and doing races like that. We spend a lot of money and we're very pretty professional about the way to go our business. Now I've learnt that uh, you know, if things go bad, is not to talk to media. Just to let you know they're not appearing. They're not. We win. Thank you. So, officially now. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Uh, Thank you.